is Amy. But we are into Champion Select as Nidalee and Lucian are banned away here from LGD and RNG take away some massive mid lane picks. Swain actually left up here as Kindred, Vladimir and Ryze are the ones that leave the bench and the final ban will be the Trundle for LGD. We do know that RNG likes to play around with that Swain in multiple positions. Yeah. Jahu showing completely oppressive mid lane prowess with it. Of course, Rek'Sai was left up as well, so Amy going to prioritize that one. And now uh, RNG will be able to grab that Swain if they would like to. Yeah, if they would like to, which I did expect them to pull the trigger on it. Again, um, Swain is really reliant on the rest of his lanes winning underneath him just because to be as effective as he wants to in trades, he needs to be pushed forward, particularly under the enemy top laner's tower and using his two damage over time abilities, which opens up a wide space for him to be ganked and put down early. Well, of course, Rek'Sai does have some early ganking potential, as you were discussing earlier on. We'll see whether Amy is going to be able to get there and affect whichever lane this Wayne does head to. I also feel that this creates a situation, though, where if everyone knows that you're going to gank the Swain lane, then it just means that MLXG can stand in a bush and wait. Yeah, that's a good point. Siv are actually going to be the augmentation here for the Swain. They had the opportunity to lock in the Karma if they wanted to, but on the hunt is going to be what they want in order to get that Swain to close distance on his opponents. It may just mean that Mata would rather have a more playmaking oriented support rather yeah. than one who's uh, there for trading potential as well as rotating your team around. So maybe we'll see the likes of his Bard again since it hasn't been banned. And also, I mean, we've had conversations about Sivabard before in the past. I know Rusty's a fan of that lane just in general. Oh, it's super cool. The Hail Mary composition where yeah. effectively you throw Timbered Fate and then you speed everyone up <laughs> to catch up with it. Let's get him. Go deep, boys. Yep. Go long. Exactly right. Well, PYL having a bit of a discussion at the moment as Braum's being considered. If he locks in Braum, it pretty much 100% means that he's about to face Sivabard, which maybe then we'll see another uh, lane swap attempt from LGD, but he goes with the safer option, the more flexible option, and he's now looking at the Karma to not only keep up with that Sivir, but to make sure that they do have a 2v2 route. And look, this is going to be the answer to the Swain. It's the Grievous Wounds on the Fizz top by the looks of things as Jinnu has switched over those Summoner spells. Of course, Punished can still play it in the mid lane, so relatively flexible. But RNG's composition now coming together, looking still terrifying. Yep. Pretty much uh, prime champions in every position so far. If this Poppy gets locked in, it would mean that Xiaohu would be taking Swain into the mid lane. He's having I would a giggle to himself at the moment. prefer to see the Azir, although you don't necessarily need it simply because you're also augmenting your wave clear with Sivir. Yeah. So not only are you assisting the fact that Swain needs assistance getting into team fights, but also making sure that you're not uh, tunneled into a wave clear mid lane. Well, they're actually going to lock in the jungler and support here as Braum and Graves have been taken away. MLXG, you can see him on your screen right there. Pretty happy with that decision. As, of course, Graves was his jungler of choice I'm towards the end of last split and MSI. Really surprised about the Braum pickup. Yeah. I thought that uh, for sure Mata would be looking for the Bard. We'll see if this means that maybe RNG are interested in the lane swap scenario. Yeah, of course. They could also flex something towards the top side of the map as well. Maybe give Looper more of a carry style as they do have at least some sort of tankiness from the bottom lane. Not entirely sure though. As Vayne's been locked in. Imp, Imp's, Imp's angry. I mean, it's of course it's the sort of classic counter pick there of the Sivir. Yeah. Lots of discussion from analysts all over the place about whether or not it's worth it. But Lissandra's been locked in here as well. We don't know quite where the lanes are going at this stage as RNG now have to sort of guess as to where the Fizz is going, where the Lissandra's going. I was going to say, the Vayne's actually fine into RNG's composition right now simply because you don't have a lot of long reach with them. Um, Sivir is, is low range, Graves is low range, Swain is low range. It's now when the Azir comes up that uh, Vayne's in a lot more trouble because she now can take damage from Azir well outside her, her range. Like, there was a reason why champions like Caitlyn started cropping back up with the rise of Victor and Azir. It's simply because she could actually damage them while not also being at their mercy. Yeah. 
Well, Imp, we know his mechanics are completely ridiculous, so we'll see whether he can actually dodge out of the way of it using that final hour, try and get himself some of the kills around this map, but you can see it is going to be the Fizz top. Lissandra is going to be there in the mid lane, Punish picking up another Control Mage, just going to try and neutralize that lane, but things definitely changed as we move into game number two, apart from Xiaohu who's still pretty keen on the Azir, and PYL happy on the comp. We talked about a possible uh, lane swap attempted from RNG. I'm going to go ahead and retract that statement. The importance really? for Swain is that he needs to make sure that he has the 1v1. Okay. But LGD did get the attempted counter matchup there with the Fizz. I'm assuming he took, he took TP and Ignite. He I did. hope he took it. Certainly did. Wants to make sure that he can keep Looper down as best as possible. Of course, Loop is still going to be frustrating, but thankfully, Playful Tricks is going to be there. Coaches are going to shake hands. We'll see whether LGD can fight back in game number two. Thank you once again, Uzi, as we are into game number two between LGD and RNG. You can see the gorgeous Heartseeker Vayne making her way out onto the rift. So now the rest of LGD joining her. Something that LGD did manage to shore up is we talked about how they didn't have a lot of kill threats on their previous composition. They were pretty much funneled uh, entirely into the top lane. They've yeah. fixed this. Lissandra obviously having a ton of kill pressure, especially once she's level six. Has uh, a little bit of trading for level one. <laughs> and then likewise, Imp, or excuse me, not Imp, um, Jinu yeah. in the top lane now having the Fizz. So a lot more viable options for Amy to try to get LGD snowballed. You can see as well, I mean, that's an aggressive build from the Fizz. We've seen a heck of a lot of this uh, fervor of battle coming out from the Fizzes. This Punish is like, oh, can I risk it? Not sure whether you can, Punished. As LGD have managed to shore themselves up some standard lanes, as RNG are actually looking for that lane swap. So they're going to head themselves towards the top side of the map and avoid this karma vein as best they can. I retracted my statement that they would try to go for the lane swap, and here they are initiating it. So again, trying to avoid these wards to make sure that they 100% get it. A uh, lot of respect going down for that fizz. Yeah, most definitely, as well as the respect for Imps Vayne into that counter matchup. It might have been Uzi and Martin, Ma Mata, sorry, not really being all that confident in the matchup. But we'll see how they go and how LGD goes in this lane swap, because I have a feeling it might be a little bit better now that they've got PYL back. It also means that Vayne should get a free farm lane, although typically with these turning. Oh, two. there's the flash, actually. Jinnu in trouble gets stunned up as Uzi's looking for first blood. Level one, that's it. First blood's going to go down and Uzi picks it up. And that is not how you want to start your LPL career on the Rift. No. Feeding first blood to Uzi at two minutes into the game. Just not respecting the concussive blows or the ability to reset Sivir's auto attack to proc that Winter's Bite. Especially when you don't have any flash to speak of here as well. Jinnu, he took W level one at the same time. Doesn't have the playful trickster and gets punished for it. Completely. As PYL looking to try and stop this jungle path as MLXG... He's able to pick up his puppy and the last one. No worries there at all. Is going to be a uh, just a very quick wave pushed in. So instead of trying to stack the wave, just trying to delete as much gold and experience from the map by just ruining those creeps into the tower. Yeah, and I wonder, is, is there sort of any reason why they'd sort of adjust their lane swap based on the fact that they got that early kill? There's kind of a, been an adjustment or a oh change God. to lane swapping in general and kind of which waves you take it on. Um, yep. I still am undecided which one I prefer or if I, we're seeing a major difference between like a two-wave push versus a three-wave push. But it's now trying to standard out again as they've uh, held the wave slightly and returned with their top laner. Uzi picking up a heck of a lot of this farm here as well as this tower is well and truly low. LGD now starting to work on theirs with the help of Jinnu here. Level 2 fears towards the bottom side of the map is punished. 
Once again, his namesake being a bit of a problem here as far as Irony is concerned because he's taken a beating in this mid lane. Not having a good time, but I really wish we could look back at those waves. So the big difference is that LGD there on the are. bottom stacked up three waves uh, because they had the cannon creep available to them as well as the incoming wave. And in pretty much one go, we're able to eliminate this tower, whereas RNG have either put three or four waves just one after the other into the tower. So you eventually get the same goal. Mm. I'm undecided again. I, I want to continue to examine the larger sample size. Yeah, it's a little bit interesting. But, bit of uh, a better bounce for LGD. Yeah. You can see Imp, he's going to head back. Only 4 CS behind, but you can see it's a cull, double longsword, and some boots picked up for Uzi already. Whereas that Vamp Scepter was all that Imp managed to grab. Trying to set up a trap, however. Waiting yeah. for Uzi and Mata to come down the lane. They're spotted out, spotted out by a very deep jungle ward. So, again, pulling a bit of an EDG. Oh, Mata is going to make his way over Boomerang, I believe. Finds a couple as Winter's Bite also going to connect. You can see back pings come down. RNG are going to be able to make their way towards this turret. Things should be fine. But lane matchups look to be Imp versus Looper as there is a Fizz still here towards the bottom side. Should be noted that all of that time the LGD spent kind of setting up that trap and standing in that brush actually bought a lot of time for Jinu to recover from his initial uh, yeah. first blood by allowing him to just kind of sit in the incoming wave and shore up his CS. Let's see, he's going to make sure that he is even. Could possibly still go against Lupu because, you know, if you die, you don't lose anything necessarily. And he's now sort of back up to relatively even in that farm, and is now heading back towards the top side. So we'll see how things shake out here as MLXG just wandering into the enemy jungle. And Imp, oh, going to help him out there with the Condemn as MLXG continues to try and walk away. Mata, of course, is here ready to help him out. And, and that quick draw timing was good. The reason why he has so much confidence to do that is because he is playing to his strong side of the map. LGD, though, continuing to try to set up traps, although Amy might be in some problems. Yeah, well, there's the shield. Big mantra. The double knockup from Amy here as well, who's trying to get something done. Double teleports are going to come out. Is Amy not going to get stunned this time? Condemn onto Mata. Gets him out of the way. And Looper's teleport now on cooldown. Jinu actually cancelled his. If Jinu hadn't cancelled his TP, this Fizz would be in so much trouble. Uh, the reason why, again, RNG were so aggressive with that is because they knew that they had a numbers advantage. Despite both teleports being available, Looper had control of the wave pushing into Jinu, and it would be suicide for Fizz to choose to follow up on that TP and cost himself all of that gold and, more importantly, all of that experience of the incoming crashing wave. Yeah. You can see now that we've broken into standard lanes, still a lot of fighting here towards the bottom side, but Uzi pretty happy at the moment with that big CS lead. The fact that he does have the cull for a bit of extra sustain and just a few extra battle stats over Imp, but Imp still able to give it to him. We'll see how it shakes out as this game continues. But Jahu sent Punish back again. Pretty scary stuff here for the Lissandra so far, but he's keeping up in farm very, very well. A uh, big thing also is the fact that he does have his level 6, so he does have some kill uh, pressure. Forced Xiaohu to respect and to take cleanse. Yeah, Amy there is going to find MLXG doing his blue buff. Jin is going to make his way around. Xiaohu is also here. Emperor's Divide is available, which is a big deal right now. More importantly, the AD carry Uzi is also coming into Whoa. position. And there's the flash. MLXG actually going to get stunned up and destroyed. Jinu is going to grab himself a kill as PYL may have found Mata. As there's the flash, but the stun comes in. Nice exhaust as Xiaohu does use the Emperor's Divide. Big knock up from Amy, though, as Uzi hunting PYL. There's a spell shield, and in comes Looper as well. Massive damage comes out as punished. Able to pick up another one. The flash goes forward. Never move. Is going to pick out the Fizz. Can they? actually secure the kill though as Uzi doesn't quite move fast enough the slow from punished is enough and it's actually a clean trade one for one trade Uzi is going to be the primary benefactor now 2-0 and and what did RNG trade for all of this because they also didn't end up getting the blue buff which they were trying to contest it's farm on Imp so Imp has now caught up in CS and he's actually going to ruin this wave for Uzi when he pushes it to a tower as I say that though Uzi's like <laughs> yep, <laughs> gotta get my farm <laughs> Getting down there. Can't miss two waves. He actually wants a gromp as well as MLXG says, no, sorry. He almost thought about it. I could feel him thinking about it. 
and he catches it in time. He even mm -hmm. gets the cannon creep. It wasn't able to oh, die. Oh, and Mata was able to get it with his relic shield. That I thought for sure he was going to lose the cannon. <laughs> Uzi doesn't lose cannons. That's why so he's one of my favorite players to watch. In the end, it buys some personal time for Imp alone in his lane to do as he sees fit. Mm -hmm. But uh, Uzi's fine with that because he picked up a free kill. Uzi now as well, actually in a little bit of trouble. P.O.L. is making his way over here. There's, there's the auto reset from the Sivir, trying to do some damage. As Imp does need to be a little bit careful. Has to be a lot of bit careful. Uh, he only has a Vamp Scepter, and he's very far forward in the lane, which is why he's giving that Winter's Bite so much respect. That is a Caulfield's Hammer, as well as a Doran's Blade. Uh, if that Winter's Bite had hit, it's just procking the Sivir ult and then running Vayne down. Well, you can see MLXG in position right now, wants to take away this red buff. Does do so as Amy now going to get slowed down by a few of these auto attacks. Ward goes over as Amy just says, man, I've wasted so much time. <laughs> and now he's able to get away from that Sand Soldier as well. So slinks his way out. But he had a level advantage over MLXG and has been farming very well around this jungle. Plus has a side stone. So Amy doing a lot better this game than he was in game number one. We'll see whether he can keep it up as this game progresses. Definitely looking much more comfortable on the rec side. Makes sense that LGD would ban it from blue side. Yeah. Try to keep Amy off of his comfort picks. No one's pulled the trigger yet on this Infernal Drake. Yeah, which is strange. Of course, the LPL teams do like to take that one pretty seriously. I kind of have a feeling that they're going to pull the trigger for it now, especially as the initial backs come in and we see pink wards coming out. But a lot of respect still being given to this Lissandra. Yeah, he's actually just farming so well. You see Punish, and he's always less than half health. But still seems to be able to do, it, uh, do enough work to pick up all of the farm that he wants to. Well, she has so much safety with her Glacial Path as well as the yeah. Frozen Tomb that she's able to trade health a little bit safer for CS than other champions might be. You can see RNG were looking at the Dragon. This Prey Seeker's not going to be able to take away the Rift Skull. And MLXG is able to lock that one down. In goes Jinnu, looking to try and take down Looper here. Chum the Waters comes in. Jinnu actually trying to take it to him right now as Ignite is ticking on the bird, man. Urchin Strike goes in. There's never move, but a really nice play from Trickster. And he gets the 1v1. Immediate teleport afterwards as Punished is going to make his way towards the bottom side. Big knock up as he's looking for even more Punished. Ults himself, lots of damage on Tomata, but you can see RNG still getting the work done. Boomerang, punished, so, so low. The flash forward, Uzi, able to pick up one of the kills. Can he get any more? Is MLXG able to make one happen? As the flash forward, MLXG able to take down Jino at the same time. This is a slaughter as LGD are falling left, right, and center. And PYL will fall down in the end. The ace comes in. Uzi's able to lock it down, and RNG, despite losing a 1v1 on the top side of the map, get an ace. But again, for LGD, it's the right thought, but just poor execution. So, Jinnu does a really amazing thing, and then does a really terrible thing back-to-back. -back. So, he gets the 1v1 kill. We have the Fizz counter pick coming, has the Ignite, makes sure that uh, Swain's not getting the healing back, finds the solo kill on Marn. Excellent. What he then does is he teleports directly into the team fight rather than backing, healing, buying, then TPing in. Uh, likewise, it was so obvious that Lissandra, after the initial back, had TP up, was going to be available for that 5v5. So here comes Lissandra in. And check out Fizz. There's no time. Uh, there's no communication from LGD that they need to pause, that they need to wait, buy time for Fizz. He immediately comes in, he's at 25% HP, he doesn't have his ultimate. He's pretty much lunchtime, free food. <laughs> and he just gets divided. Honestly, Xiaohu getting a lot of work done with that ultimate. And then looking to try and get his way over with the shifting sands. But RNG just looked so much more coordinated, honestly. It wasn't even the Fizz. I have a feeling if he had to come in with full health, Without his ultimate, he still would have been lunchtime, which just would have taken a longer time to chew. But it's still just that difference of you had the ability to have a 4v5, and you specifically put yourself in a scenario to still be a 4v4. Yeah. Well, as the dust settles, it's a 4-0-2 Sivir for Uzi. Does have his Essence Reaver completed. And I mean, despite a vain counterpick, I have a feeling that Uzi's still going to be pretty happy. As the siege is beginning here in the mid lane, MLXG clearing out tunnels, getting vision down. And this turret is relatively low. Glacial Path is going to make sure that the minion wave dies here out of Punished, but they can't stand to this turret. Jahu's just commanding too much respect on this Azir. 
despite the fact that he's down on farm. Big thing also is the lane assignments here. So like you said, Uzi, very big, has the four kills. He's in full siege mode right now, which is why we see him in the mid lane, splitting farm between Xiaohu and him because they're prioritizing taking the structure down and making sure that Looper, he's no longer across from Jinu's Fizz. He's done with that. He's yep. now moved on to the vein, keeping Imp down and being an annoyance there and just soaking up more farm so we can get to that three item power spike. Well, he's most certainly doing that for now as MLXG looking to try and take away this red buff. Does so effectively as the Mantra Q comes in. Mata just ignores it. Doesn't seem to phase him too much as Looper does have his Rod of Ages. Nash's Tooth done here for Jahu as well. He sets up a Sun Turret in the mid lane now that they've taken that one down. And the bottom outer turret, the last one remaining for those. If we have a look at the gold though, still 3,000 gold the lead, sort of organically here for RNG after that team fight. And it's pretty much entirely on this 80 carry, so all in Uzi's hands. Not a bad place for to it that. to be. <laughs> exactly right. He's thinking back to his Starhole and Royal Club days, thinking, yeah, I know what to do here. Is MLXG going to make his way in at exactly the right time? And they secure the turret. Uzi able to lock it down with that last auto attack, and just not a lot that LGD can do when it's a three versus two. And suddenly this gold lead is starting to open up further and further. So you were talking about how it's 3k, oh, God, now punish. opened up to 4k. And it's still able to stay ahead and farm, but man, it's just getting more and more dangerous here in this mid lane. Doesn't have teleport available just yet after that team fight. Sheen picked up here for Jinu, so starting to get some battle stats. Iceborne Gauntlet looks to be coming in next. And it's really important that Punish was pushed out here, and it allows RNG to cheat so uh, bravely through the jungle. Is now oh, a nice good tunnel. tunnel. Yeah, Amy able to get himself out in time. Xiaohu does have his ult on cooldown now for a bit. We'll see whether LGD can make any moves to try and capitalize on it. Now a blue buff to help with that CDR. They have pressure in every single lane. It's really frightening. And of course the power of Swain not all that pronounced at the moment. As Looper one zero one zero ahead in farm by about 20. So he's waiting on uh, his Spirit Visage, which is going to be big core item because obviously it synergizes so well with his self-healing. And double AP. And double AP as well as the uh, Zani's Hourglass if he really wants to be obnoxious and use the stasis to help zone out yeah. since he can use his ultimate through that. So that's kind of, that's the two big swing points that you're looking for Looper before he becomes that god tier Swain. Uh, for now though, everyone should be looking at Uzi. And it is everyone's job to kill Uzi. <laughs> and everyone on RNG's job to make sure that Uzi doesn't die. Theoretically though, LGD have so many tools to try to get back there. They've got Jinu on the Fizz. He was able to 1v1 and solo kill Looper, which means that lane assignment, um, if Jinu ever gets pressure on the map, someone else has to respond to him, which is what we see Uzi and Mata doing right now because Looper can't stand across from him yeah. until he has his MR. So LGD do have some weapons right now where they could try to, you know, stall the game out, play the map a little bit differently. Oh, God. Instead, they're feeding Imp into Azir and just getting chunked out or oh, dead. One more auto attack has to use the heal. Actually, I'm not sure whether he did, but it was definitely a fear heal as the bottom lane from LGD have to fear the Birdman. But there's just, there's no and reason for freeze. Imp and PYL to be there. Why yep. aren't Imp and PYL in the mid lane? You have a double teleport composition. Both TPs are up. Punished could either be facing across from Uzi, so you could make sure that Fizz gets his lane assignment across from Swain, or it could be across from Azir. Instead, you put your Vayne in a precarious situation. She's chunked out, and now you lose pressure on the map. RNG are about being proactive and looking for damage on the tower. Well, already here towards the bottom side of the map is Shahu. Going to meet Uzi here in this brush. Once again, sharing farm, but they really want to be able to pick up these objectives. It is going to fall. Staying on the bottom side as well now. Oh, deep TP. Yeah, they're looking for it. On the hunt has been popped now as Mata is going to get slowed down. And the teleport coming in from RNG. Lupa is going to make his presence known. Cancels it actually as the fish comes in in the back line. Doesn't actually find it. The spell shield from Uzi was fantastic. Emperor's Divide to break up the team fight. And immediately Xiaohu flashes out. Punish gets the ultimate, but it's on Uzi. He dies because he put it down that way. And now Imp running away. End of the line doing a lot of damage there from MLXG. As now they're limping underneath their turret. Lupa as well finally makes his way in. 
And RNG, another team fight victory. Only a one for nothing, but they grabbed the turret, and I have a feeling they'll get themselves a dragon. And the correct word was LGD limping away again. Just a mis-execution on that. Really well uh, collapsed and responded to by RNG to cover Uzi, to collapse back to his flanks as soon as Punish got back there. But fact of the matter is, is that Punish did reach the back line. He did his job as Lissandra, but there was no follow-up. Throughout the duration of the Frozen Tomb, yes, he didn't use it defensively, but LGD LGD were on the complete other side of a wall. There was no damage. Yeah. Felt like he was in the middle of everyone. Still has his flash available. Poor. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, we're, we're a bit spoiled for uh, Lissandra players, honestly, here in the LPL. I it mean, we've got Easy Hoon and Tank, and they're pretty good at making that champion look like she can do pretty ridiculous things. Do you agree that uh, Punish is not quite the Lissandra as easy Oh, Imp in trouble here. Xiaohu able to get some work done. Nice uh, speed up there from POL. Gets them all to safety as Uzi now moving into the mid lane. That red buff looks to be owned by RNG as MLXG once again just making sure that everyone knows that he is the king of the jungle. Owning every single buff. Yeah. We're about to have a skirmish in the top side though. Nope, everyone going to disengage. RNG trying to prioritize map pressure to make uh, LGD respond to them. Yeah, means that MLXG now has this space in order to pick up the dragon. He's going to do so relatively easily. You can see him concentrating very, very hard as well as LGD. Actually, everyone moving towards the top side of the map. And there's two dragons, Infernal and Mountain, probably the most coveted of the four being picked up very early on so far for this team. Yeah, especially because RNG are in full siege mode. That yeah. Mount Dragon is going to do wonders for them. They also are a very early Baron team. In fact, most people would say that the Infernal Drake would probably be RNG's favorite, but I think they would actually benefit most from the Mountain Drake simply because of their love for Baron. Yeah, and this especially this game, their love for Towers. Obsessed with Baron. <laughs> they most certainly historically were. It was their favorite place to be on the map. In fact, didn't quite know where else to go. I wish we had the heat maps back then <laughs> for just all five members. <laughs> That'd be the Infernal Baron heat map. Ridiculous. It's EDG. EDG. I believe LGD looking to try and contest their blue buff, too. but it's just not happening. They look like EDG right now. Well, RNG do, yeah. LGD, not so much, unfortunately. Just got to get to that 55 minutes, I believe, yeah. in the imp vein. I don't think the imp vein is the problem. I'm looking at this 403 Sivir and then thinking, if I was imp, I'd be like, well, what do you want me to do, guys? It's a frightening scenario. And it's, again, just how this early game has shaken out, despite the fact that Jinu was able to get that solo kill. Giving first blood to Uzi is never a good idea. But this is something cool about Uzi's career, because typically you don't think of Uzi as a Sivir player. You think of him as the Vayne player. Yeah. Um, when Uzi went to OMG, which was a massive trade, he actually became exclusively a Sivir player. And yes, Sivir was very powerful in the meta then, because it was truly a very structure-focused meta. He kind of changed his identity, and he matured a lot. Uh, a lot of people have this idea that Uzi is incredibly selfish, that he demands all these resources from his teams, that he demands perfection. In, and in those people's defense, he did used to. Yes. But over his time for uh, OMG, he actually became like exclusively a lane-swapping AD carry who would simply play PvE and play utility AD carries. And he's now 3.4 thousand gold ahead. I did not know that that was quite going to be the extent of the lead, but that is ridiculous. But this is where... That lead started. It started with his identity on OMG and his growth and development there to allow him to do this so freely. And now he's so versatile as a carry. He can be that Vayne player. Or, as you can see here, he can be a pretty goddamn good Sivir player. Look, I ain't gonna argue with that, Froskerin. Most definitely not. As RNG, once again, their suffocation tactic is coming in, but it's a nice teleport to come around the side. Punish looking for a way in. Does have a decent target there if they can get some vision, but not gonna be able to find it. RNG are going to be able to make their way out. Able to move on to this top lane that was prepared earlier, and RNG setting up once again for a siege with Looper with Teleport on the bottom side. 
They have also, like you said, have a uh, wave going, so it's not just Looper down there, but Whoa. Amy. Yeah, big flash in there as Jinu does throw a fish in. Amy just getting taken down so, so low. Punish is able to ult himself up. Empress Divide comes in, and Punish not able to do too much. Does have Azonias, but he's going to die. And RNG clean up two kills, grab the turret, and we'll see what more they can get done. And this is one of the problems with Vayne, because she is such short range. The Never Move came down, completely zoned Imp off the entire duration of that team fight which means that it'll be the inhibitor for RNG. Oh my goodness. And Imp has to do everything just to avoid spells right now. You're right, just cannot get any auto attacks in there. Because now RNG will be able to take down the top lane inhibitor. Jinu does find a fish. Actually, Zhao is able to snake his way out, but it's just too much disengage out of RNG. And LGD without the tools to follow. Something really underestimated from Swain is his ability to disengage into zone for teams with Beatrice. Yeah. Yeah. Laser Parrot, man. Ridiculous. Plus that Never Move as well. I mean, you saw the fact that Imp had to use his Tumble, gets out of the Never Move, has to go back and cop some more lasers from Beatrice, gets out of the way of that, and then there's Sand Soldiers in his face. I mean, what do you do He's got three against this comp? AoE abilities on his kit. Two of them are ranged. And two of them involve birds. <laughs> I say all three. Never move has claws. Hey, that's true. Underground birds. <laughs> Underground birds. The unseen bird is the deadliest. <laughs> Just not entirely sure which birds live underground. I've been watching a lot of documentaries recently as well, and I ha would have thought that, you know, in the caves episode, there'd be the underground bird, but I mean, it's only bats, really. Pretty sure they're mammals. Baron was taken, though. The, sw <laughs> the power of the underground birds means that Swain can tank that one up fairly well. I don't even... <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the it. above ground birds, but it I think we could probably It was that. also the power of the golden chicken. Yes. The ability to do Baron from over the wall is here coming in big there. Mm -hmm. But uh, RNG, full control, in the driver's seat. Not quite the uh, gold disparity that we saw last game, although it's closing in on 11k. Yeah, and this is really the, the bird solo lane comp, isn't it, really? The bird comp? Yeah, I like it. Bird is the word. It certainly is. Thankfully, though, Imp was able to pick himself up a red buff. So Bramble back down for LGD. Now they now have to deal with these super creeps on the top side of the map and barrened up minions everywhere else where RNG are going to be trying to add pressure. Uzi has got himself the Infinity Edge, Essence Reaver, and Phantom Dancer. A fully online Sivir at 25 minutes in the game. I think happy as Larry is the phrase that I'd say. Not many others. LGD looking to try and hold onto this inner turret. It's got about a third of its health bar left, and I have a feeling they may just need to concede it. That was an optimistic Prey Seeker, Amy. Trying to get what he can. Too much. Yeah. Dig up those table scraps where available. Now watch where he digs, man. There's birds underground. Don't want to get caught by that never move. Yeah, damn right. That creep wave did not last very long. We'll see where, where RNG decide to go next, but at the moment, this game is entirely on a silver platter. MLXG looking to try and grab their second Infernal Drake. Just a casual boomerang from Uzi is all he's going to get as he wants to head down and start sieging up that bottom lane uh, inhibitor turret. RNG just frankly make these games look so easy. Yeah, it looks it's frightening how scary they look. Whereas on the other side, uh, EDG is struggling in independent maps throughout their series. Mm. Uh, their draft phase looking a little bit questionable, so it's unfortunate that we won't get to see EDG versus RNG until the cross-conference, but definitely building hype up into that matchup to see who is truly on top right now, because this team looks unstoppable. They most certainly do. And I mean, what you were saying before about the fact that Group A and Group B look very different as far as competitiveness are concerned, I think that, that might definitely come into it. So you're right, I think this cross-conference is going to be very interesting, and I have a feeling that RNG may find, you know, one of their first true tests when we do see them across from each other. Of course, WE is still looking okay. As there's a playful trickster in, but Beatrice is going to get really mad with that fears and punished. She's going to get taken down by MLXG. Sorry, Dai Xiaohu off to the side. MLXG is able to help out with this inhibitor, but look at the Sand Soldiers. Look at the AoE from RNG. And LGD just cannot do anything. They're at the mercy of this RNG squad. All the inhibitors are dead. This, these Nexus turrets are falling down. LGD now with the last ditch effort as Jinu's dancing around. Imp not going to get caught by the Never Move as MLXG going down relatively low. Pops the heal. He's trying to kite this one out. Still has the mechanics of a god, but just doesn't have the team with him right now. 
Still kiting, still life stealing, still trying to get the work done. Dodges another never move. Mata could be in trouble, but the game's just going to be won because Uzi was smacking the Nexus. RNG, good God, what a performance. The game was already one of Mata's eyes. He, he tried to go 1v1 with Imp and use the Baron buff on the creeps to kill his previous old 80 carry. But yeah. like you said, with that win, RNG definitely make a statement over LG, although a lot of smiles as they're going to shake some former teammates' hands. Yeah, it's really true. You saw PYL taking his time to get out of his chair, but eventually did as Mata and Uzi, big smiles on their faces. And RNG, I just don't know how you can look that happy and calm and confident after doing that to an opposing side. That was cold, hard, calculated League of Legends. Deserved bow, and whew, they've definitely set a precedent here, RNG. Oh, yeah, but now the question is, you know, have they actually really been tested?